Hello, welcome to What's Up in the 90s. And uh, I think it's appropriate we have our guest, Roberta Smith, on today, who you're going to meet in a moment. But uh, a lot of people with the uh, New Year's resolutions in effect, maybe feeling guilty about what they did over the holidays, are thinking seriously about getting in shape again, making that commitment. And we're fortunate to have Roberta uh, with us today, who's a, uh, uh, a personal weight trainer um, that, uh, with uh, Pacific Coast, Pacific Coast uh, mm -hmm. Gym. Uh, she works at different, different places, which you'll, you'll find out in a moment. But Roberta, thanks for coming on the show for today. You're welcome, Brian. Okay. Roberta, I, I gotta ask you, you're, you're, uh, I know you're a, a, a mother of uh, two children. Mm -hmm. uh, you go, you've also, believe it or not, folks, she's a grandmother. Um, and for someone to be in, in the shape that you are is, is a tremendous attribute to your desire to have, you know, be in that kind of shape. When did you first start working out? After my second child. Okay. And I wanted to get back in shape and um, figured uh, training with weights was probably the quickest way. It gave me the fastest result. Okay, but you weren't really athletic uh, prior to that, perhaps? Or? No, not necessarily. I mean, I did my high school activities and a few activities in college, but uh, no. Okay. So what kind of a transition? I mean, there's a lot of people who are watching the show today who probably have never been in shape before. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, let's say that someone who didn't work out, who didn't have a background in working out, like, like perhaps you did not, um, suddenly after you know having a child you're probably feeling a little sluggish um, what's it like for someone to have to make that commitment who's never been really in good shape is it was it really tough for you no I had the desire <coughs> excuse me I had the desire to get into shape and uh, I saw my results after my first three months into the gym and after six months it, I had a noticeable difference where everybody could tell I was doing something to keep my figure Mm -hmm. together. Okay. What kind of commitment was that for you um, as far as, you know, time and, uh, what, you know, what, what was the, the commitment all about? M my one-year commitment that I made to myself was one hour for each workout and those that consisted of four workouts a week. Mm -hmm. And uh, I told myself if I didn't like the result after one year that uh, I would go on to a different activity. But uh, since I enjoyed the what looked back at me in the mirror, I um, continued on with it. Okay. Um, now, one thing is that a lot of people, they'll, they'll start working out, especially at this time of year, wouldn't you agree? Um, I think so, more so after the holidays than uh, before the holidays. People are busy and they don't even have the time along the, <coughs> excuse me, the desire. Mm -hmm. Now, with that, what can they expect? Um, what are going to be some of the obstacles? Let's say, let's say they were to call you up and say, Roberta, I need a personalized trainer. Or let's say that they don't use a personalized trainer. They're just going to go join a gym or they're going to buy their own equipment. What can they expect as far as um, what they're going to have to do? What are some of the obstacles that they're going to have to overcome in order to get in the shape that they want to be? I, I think the first obstacle is when a person first joins a gym, I think the gym is um, a little overwhelming for them when they don't understand what weights and what exercise uh, applies to the specific body parts that they want to uh, change about themselves. So the, I think the first opt obstacle is just learning how to exercise and, and uh, becoming familiar with the people that uh, are in the gym, all doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And c certainly because you're a personalized trainer, imagine it, uh, your belief, and I'm sure it, it is in fact uh, truth, that and basically people can jog and burn off body fat but then from that standpoint if they're not working the other muscle groups then they, it gets kind of flimsy um, what and you're gonna and one thing Roberta's gonna do is that uh, at the halfway point we're gonna actually go through some different exercises with that are gonna exercise certain body parts but um, um, well let, let's get specifically with women what are some of the things that women uh, since you're gonna be working solely with women what are some of the things that women would be working on in particular um, generally speaking, it's the lower abdomen, uh, the buttocks, the thighs, the backs of the thighs, and, and uh, nine out of every ten women want to start in that area. I'm always surprised when a woman says she wants to start with upper body versus lower body. Mm -hmm. Does that happen very often? No. I, I would say one, one out of every ten clients want to start with upper body. Okay. Well, it seems like uh, men would have some uh, areas also that they want to work on, let's say buttocks. Actually, the uh, scientific name is gluteus maximus, mm -hmm. but uh, they want to work on those areas as well, as well as chest. Um, but as as far as women are, you know, they're certainly the more interested in abdominal. Are they interested in working, you know, let's say chest? And I know a lot of women that are probably interested in their their arms. Do you see many women who are, after they get those 
concentrated area, areas like legs and thighs and, and buttocks and hips, they start developing an interest in working the other body parts? Yes, they do because they, they want everything to be working together and um, they know that there's something just a little bit different about a woman who's developing her upper body versus one that's just working her lower body. So they have a desire to learn everything in the gym. Okay. Roberta, I, I don't know if you were always kind of had a, like a thinner profile, but there's a lot of women that might be carrying on extra weight. They're concerned about, you know, they're fe in fear of working out with weights because they're going to get bigger. Mm -hmm. um, what advice would you have to a woman who might be a little larger than, uh, you know, a little larger? And what would be kind of some exercise program that you put her on? She would really be on the, the same exercise program, but the difference is, is lighter weights, higher reps, versus someone who wants to, to build bulk, and it's heavier weights and fewer reps. So again, um, someone that's, that's heavy wants to burn the fat that's on top of the muscle, and someone who's small wants to make the muscle larger. So it's just really how many repetitions and the amount of weight she's using and how often she's doing these exercises every week. So you don't think there's a threat that she'll get bigger than by, by using weights? Because I imagine that that's, that's the threat that, that appears in a situation like that. You don't think she'd get bigger? No. Uh, every once in a while I hear that uh, from a larger woman. And um, fat doesn't cling to a working muscle. And therefore, you always want to put an emphasis in working the muscle to some degree. Uh, I like my clients to all break a sweat when they're, when they're exercising so that I know that they've had a good workout and the muscles really have gone to work. And then diet is 50% of it. Okay. And that's another point right there is a, a diet, nutrition. Um, what kind of, are you able to put programs together for people who, uh, you know, I always hear that, that working out and your diet, if you're, if you're working out real hard but you're, you're eating at 12 o'clock at night, uh, potato skins with sour cream or something. It's probably uh, defeating the whole purpose, but what kind of uh, advice can you give people as far as nutrition is concerned? Well, all good diets eliminate the foods that, that I eliminate uh, from their diets, which would be anything high in sodium, uh, saturated fats, sugars, and, and all good diets eliminate those foods. And, and to take in a lot of liquids, it's very important that they put liquid into the muscle because the muscle is mostly water. Mm -hmm. So it's very important when they're dieting that they do drink a lot of water, a lot of juices, and, and eliminate the, the wrong foods that yeah. all good diets do eliminate. Okay. Um, now, I want to get back to the, the oversized women because, you know, there's, uh, there's uh, women, from what I understand, carry a, a little more fat anyway, you know, for the, just, you know, physically anyway. Um, how much can they possibly burn off? I mean, is it, is it possible? Or someone, I don't know what, again, I don't know what your body type was before, but how, how much is it to burn off that's safe? Like you, you need to have a certain amount of fat in your body. Um, the average, uh, well, it depends on a woman's age, but average is about 22% body fat. That's a good average for a woman in her mid 30s. And how does someone check something like that? Are you, are you able to do, check people for body fat content? Uh, I, I personally can't, and the best way of checking it is underwater, but they do have instruments. Water immersion? Where, yes, where, where they can uh, measure the body fat. Okay. Now, let's say that you've taken somebody under your wing, and, and they're working out. Um, I don't know if you, if you do uh, aerobic exercises as well with them, or, or some sort of, uh, or at least introduce them to the training on the bike, or walking, or jogging, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, after they've done that, let's say they, they, they get down to they feel comfortable with themselves and they start working the body parts. Um, and let's say they start getting into, you know, like you're in tremendous shape, but do you think it's a turn off, you know, after a while if they keep working out, do you think it's a turn off to men that, um, that women are getting, you know, stronger like that? What's your feelings on that? I think men love the feel of a firm, cur curvaceous body. And um, I've never had a, a negative response to being in shape. Mm -hmm. And um, most of the women I train after a few months find out that uh, it's very appealing to develop some muscle and look athletic and, and be healthy looking. What are some of the things that you felt through get, working out? What are some of the, the positive things that have happened to you uh, with regard to your getting in shape and, and feeling good about yourself? Well, a, a builder, uh, someone who's in shape and someone who's building, uh, walks with a stride of confidence. And uh, a lot of that is due to the stronger back muscles and the flatter abdomen. And so they're carrying themselves differently physically, but I feel um, people who exercise on a regular basis 
feel good about themselves. They feel healthier. And Probably your brothers, your brothers don't push you around anymore either, <laughs> if you've got any brothers. Do you have any brothers? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, if you did, they probably wouldn't want to push you around too much. Um, now, what's, is there is this a myth that, that muscle turns to fat? There's a lot of people that are concerned with when they work out that they've heard that muscle will turn to fat after a certain extent. Is that correct? No, that isn't. Uh, muscle is muscle and fat is fat, and the two will never meet. Uh, fat lies on top of the muscle, and this is why with every exercise you want to work the muscle because it's a physical impossibility for the fat to cling to the muscle when it's working such as that in a runner who is very lean and you see just muscle in the leg and they're constantly burning the fuel and burning the fat so mm -hmm. no it won't but if you do stop exercising and you don't do something to put yourself in shape of course you're going to gain weight okay. so okay especially if you're eating big macs and french fries at uh... and banana splits after your workout <laughs> Um, we're going to be taking a break here shortly, but uh, one thing is that uh, when we come back, we're going to have Roberta actually show us some exercises that, that uh, I imagine that you'd, you'd train people in. They're my, they're my starting exercises. Your starting exercises? Mm -hmm. Okay. We're going to see what those are, so uh, that'll be interesting. Um, before we break, I want to uh, thank California Mortgage for sponsoring us today. Uh, they're at the Prune Yard Tower in Campbell. You can call, call me up personally at uh, California Mortgage at 559-0100. And if you have any questions with regards to refinancing, which right now, folks, is, it's excellent. If it, anything to do with refinancing and purchases, please give me a call. We'll be right back uh, with Roberta Smith, and uh, we'll probably get a little sweaty here. Right back. <laughs> fitness instructor, a personalized trainer. And uh, Roberta's going to show us a little exercise right now. These are for both men and women. Um, and they're exercises that you can also do at home, so uh, we're getting some good training for free. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Roberta, why don't you let us know a little bit what we're going to do. Okay, we're going to be uh, doing some exercises for lower body. We're going to start uh, working here for the quadricep muscles, back here on the hamstring muscles, and this is where women have a tendency to get a lot of cellulite, and an exercise to round the buttocks. Okay. Okay? Okay. Go for it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I'm not... Uh, extremely happy about this. Uh, uh, Roberta had uh, someone that was going to join her and, and do the exercises um, and they weren't able to make it and here I am. Uh, I'm just asking Roberta not to hurt me. So, Okay, th Brian, this is a, a squat, okay, and this is a, a, would also be a warm-up exercise, but it's the first and foremost important exercise for a woman to learn how to do as well as a man because it works almost every muscle in your lower body. So you would, you would take a bar if you were exercising at home or a broomstick or, or you, you could even do it with dumbbells and uh, keep your face forward and just simply squat down and let your legs push you back up. Okay, what's this working? This is working the front thigh muscles, quadricep muscles. Okay, okay. but you're also getting a little rump there and... A uh... little bit. Yeah. Okay, you wanna try it? Yeah. Oh. Just teasing. <laughs> Okay, so I bring it up over here. Uh-huh, and it wouldn't be right on your neck. It would be across your uh, trapezium muscles, across your back. Okay. Okay, and you would squat down and simply... Am I on the balls of my feet when I do that, too? Yeah, or well, you I want to keep, keep your feet down? flat, okay? okay so and you want to make... Gotta stay down. All right, and you want to make the leg work. Okay. Exactly. Great. Wasn't that easy? Uh, yeah. Okay, and this exercise should be repeated... Uh, two sets, 15 set, uh, fifteen repetitions each set, and that would be something I would be giving to a beginner. Now one thing is that you mentioned two sets of 15. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're talking with people and they give you an idea of what they want to do, some people might say that they just want to firm and tone up. Mm -hmm. Other people might want to say that they want to bulk up. Mm -hmm. Would that change the repetitions and the amount of sets that you do? Uh, yes, it would. Uh, if for somebody who wants to build very large muscles, they would put some weight on the end of this and, and continue to, as they got stronger, to keep on adding weight, and they would be doing fewer repetitions and heavier weight versus someone who wants to tone, and such as women often just want to tone, they would keep uh, repetitions a little higher and the weight a little lower. Great. Okay. Okay. And the next exercise I want to show is called a lunge, and this is uh, what rounds a woman's gluteus maximus as well as a man's. And it's uh, the second most... You also can call it a butt, folks. So. We can do that on TV? <laughs> can we move these? Sure. With them on. Uh-huh. 
Okay, this is called the lunge? Okay, this is called the lunge, and what it's doing is it's stretching all the hamstring muscles in, in the back of the thigh, and uh, you would do 10 on each side. You can either alternate legs, or you can just keep one leg and go straight forward, okay? Mm -hmm. And you would do 10 on each side, and then you do the other side. Okay. So, just like that? Mm-hmm, exactly. Let's get 10 on, Brian, 10 on each side. No, I, th yeah. I think one or two is good for right now. One and two? <laughs> now, what, now, another question I have is that at what point, let's say that 15 repetitions is no problem for these people. You always hear that you want to get bring it uh, like a burn, bring, it, bring the muscle to a burning point. Mm -hmm. um, is that true with an exercise like this? Um, or any other ones that we're doing that we want to eventually bring the muscle to a burning point? Exactly, because you want to burn the fat. You okay. want to continue. You always want to work the muscle. As to how large a person wants to get, that depends on how much weight you know, they want to put on the end again. And for somebody who can, once they get their body in shape, if they want to stay in shape, they would just continue to, to use that weight and those amount of reps okay. wherever they stopped at. So, so far we've worked the, uh, the quadricep. Quadricep muscle. We've worked right. the rear end. Yeah. Okay. Where are we going to hit now? Okay. And again, we're going to talk about the backs of the thighs. That seems to be a real problem area. Okay. Okay. And these are called uh, stiff-legged deadlifts. Okay? okay. And they are done with the, the weight. And you would just simply come down and look forward and come straight back up. And okay. in doing this, you're stretching all the muscles in the backs of the legs. And you need to touch your toes. And when you're mentioning stretching too, uh, should people stretch before they work out, or can, can, are yes. you actually doing this at the same time as you're working out? No, stretching is very important. A warm up is very important, or riding a stationary bike, and you would or show, a stairmaster. You would show people how to warm up mm -hmm. as well. So that's part of your fitness training would be to show people how to do warm up or stretching. Prior Absolutely. To okay. Oh yeah, this very. This would be like starting a car and driving it with a cold engine. How'd you do this? Just okay. simply like that? Look forward. Keep your back arched a little bit and come straight up. Like this? No, keep your arms straight. I'm sorry, I didn't watch. <laughs> he wasn't paying attention. Okay, now stand straight. Just stand straight. Stand straight. Just okay. stand straight. Okay. Now keep these st stiff. Your arms, don't bend your elbow. Okay. And you're going to come down and you're going to touch your toes. Okay. Just like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. And you can feel you can feel all the muscle back sure, here. Sure, a little stretch there. Uh mm -hmm. You can feel it stretch out in the calves line there as well. That's true. You can. And these uh, these exercises can all be done with dumbbells as well as with a bar. Okay. So for someone who wanted to just invest in now, five or ten now pound dumbbells. Just for you people that don't know what fitness. Is, when she's saying dumbbells, she means these things. She doesn't mean some some <laughs> neighbors of yours that maybe you're having troubles with. Yeah. <laughs> We've all known at least one of those. <laughs> So, so these exercises, again, can be done with dumbbells just as easily, okay? And the lunge also can be done with dumbbells, okay? okay? As well as a squat. Okay. You ready to work on your abdomen? Uh, this is like an abdomen, I'm sure, is a tough place for everybody to work, but yeah, let's go for it. So I can imagine we're working. Now, is this something you're concerned with, too? Well, let's say you're doing working out. You work legs one day, um, would another day you work something else, or, or are these exercises that you can work everything in the same day? I, I try not to hit the whole body in one day. Okay. One day it's lower body, and the next day it's upper body for someone who only has, let's say, four days to work out. But with every workout, I say do abdomen. Okay. Okay. So there's no way getting around it, huh? So you have to do abdomen no all the time. So uh, for, for a beginner. Okay. Okay, I, I would uh, recommend some crunches. Okay. Okay, just. Will you be okay to do that? Okay, so I would recommend some crunches and just start coming up like this. Okay. And about two sets of 25 okay. for starters. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, Brian. <laughs> oh, I was hoping she'd forget this. <laughs> So I bring legs here? Yeah, you can cross your legs, that's fine. Okay. Keep your knees together, put your elbows up. There you go, now crunch. And you'll feel this work in the upper abdomen. 
Oh, yeah. Okay, you've got 20 to go. No, <laughs> <laughs> I, I would, I would, Roberta, but we're on a time thing here, you know, so. Okay, I see. Okay, well, <laughs> let me get a couple more in. And uh, the other one for lower abdomen, and you, and you always want to make sure you work your your lower and your upper abdomen at the same time because the, the lower abdomen requires the upper abdomen to be working for it to work. So that doesn't actually work the whole abdominal area? No, that's for upper abs. Upper abs, okay. So you want, you, you, want to work, yeah, you want to work your lower ab. And you want to do some leg raises. You can tuck your hands under your rear. And just about 12 inches off the ground. Okay? Okay. And you want to control the movement. So you can work the lower abdomen. Okay. I'm going to take your word on that one. Okay? No, go ahead, Brian. Well, the time thing, you know. Again. See, just think. Some people have to, to pay okay, for just this. Just like that. Yeah, that's it. Right in here. Okay, do you feel that? Uh-huh. Okay, and I always warm up my clients with abdomen ab exercises. Okay. Okay. Okay, yeah. so we've hit the abdominal. I mentioned we're going to do a little arm work. Are we not? No. Uh, we... We can. We can. I mean, dumbbells. Couldn't you use dumbbells somewhere or another? Where? Yeah, we can. Um, yeah, dumbbells can be utilized for a whole lot of a whole lot of things. Once you take one of these. Okay. okay. Uh, if you were sitting in a chair at home, okay, you could work the bicep, which is this muscle here in the front of the arm. Okay. Okay. Or you can do it standing as well, and you could bring it up. Okay. And slowly. Oh, you always want to control the weight. Always controlling the weight. Let's look at that arm. Not this one. <laughs> so okay. this is working the bicep muscle right in here. Correct. Okay. Okay. Is it working now, any forearm? I mean, I can feel my forearm all tensed up too. Imagine it's working a little forearm, no? Always with, yeah, you're always working the forearm. But if you wanted to, <coughs> excuse me, work forearm separately, you'd want to find a chair where you could rest your hands and you'd want to bring this up and let it come all the way down to the end of your fingers. Oh, okay. And you'd want to do a cur wrist curl and you'd want to bring it all the way back up. Okay. Okay. So you'd work the whole belly of the forearm and the bicep. Okay. Okay, for this muscle under here, which is an area that women don't like to get flabby in. Okay. So triceps. Call it tricep. Mm -hmm. So you would be lifting and holding this dumbbell. Okay. And this can all be done at home or at a gym. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's not forget shoulders. Okay. We'll have you. Okay, so for shoulders, you want to do lateral raises. This is working the side of the shoulders, okay? Okay. Then we actually call that the deltoid, I think. Uh -huh. I'm glad I took an anatomy physiology, so just like that? Correct. You want to lift and you want to feel the tension right here. And this, yeah, yeah. this is what, what gives you your width on your shoulders. As this muscle develops, it broadens your shoulder. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, is uh, now, of course, we're working with very few weights here. That's but if you if you were to join a gym or something like that, imagine you've got you've got access to everything. Now, as far as your personal training, would you meet people at a gym, or what's a what's a normal protocol? That's correct. That's where I, I book their appointments at uh, the gym of their choice. And currently, I'm at Pacific Coast, so. Uh, but you I can move around to other gyms. Let's say well, yeah, I have the option of training wherever I want. Great. Super. Mm -hmm. Uh, I want to thank Roberta Smith for being our guest today. Um, it's unbelievable. She's a grandmother, <laughs> and uh, that should be a, that should serve as an inspiration for a lot of you out there who think it's too late to get in shape. Um, really want to encourage you. If, you. if you think about getting in shape and, and you've got a New Year's resolution, go for it. Uh, Roberta, how can somebody get a hold of you? Uh, they can contact me at Pacific Coast Gym, or they can contact you here at the station, and you can give them my number. Okay, great. You can contact us here at Cable, Heritage Cable Vision. Actually, call 358 2798 or call Pacific Coast Gym to get a hold of Roberta. But just get in shape. It's going to be great for you. Next week, um, we're looking for another good show. Please join us. Bye now. Bye bye. Okay, so. Can you do it,